invited us here, thank the media and our elected representative to come uh, to celebrate what is a, a very significant historical uh, event. And we're glad that all of you are here. And we do believe this is a historical and significant event. And uh, I guess I should explain that because there's some that wouldn't think it's so important. And let me take just a few words to uh, put into context the significance of what these uh, representatives of ours are doing on behalf of the people. In order to understand it, I guess we need to realize there's two groups of people. They, they look at this as uh, in two different ways. Some feel that uh, our freedoms are, are uh, about to lose. About to lose. Others feel they've been here for a long time. We got nothing to worry about. The Tea Party came into being because we feel that our freedoms are in jeopardy. That's why we came into being. Why would we think that? It may take a look back into history a bit just to see why we feel this event today is so important. What is it about history that makes us uh, wary and concerned? If you look through history for 5,000 years, what you find is that the common man lived a short and desperate life. He, he looked forward to no progress because the word progress didn't exist. He lived in drudgery and lived a short life. And, and he never did sit down with his children and say, look, I'm working hard for you because I want to create for you a better future. That was never discussed. He lived like all of his ancestors did for thousands of years. Nothing changed until very recently. A new government came into being. You see, the reason people lived the desperate life for thousands, five thousand years, was because they had bad government. We got a new government. That new government said, this is a government of the people. But you, as elected representatives, your number one objective is to protect our Constitution and protect our rights. And these elected officials behind us today, they've come to do that. They see that everybody's future is dependent upon not making a lot more laws, but their number one objective is what? To protect the people's freedom in the Constitution. And that is the main reason they're here, and that's why it's so important. So if, you, if you're among those that have not considered the importance of your Constitution, I would, I would suggest you look at it. You see, the most important thing you can do in South Carolina to protect your well-being, the most important thing you can do is not vote, that's important. The most important thing you can do is talk. You must talk with your representatives. You see, if, uh, 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 people that are free uh, do not continue to talk, they will not continue to be free. Freedom depends upon talking. It seems a little strange, but it's true. You must communicate with your elected officials. Our elected officials have said, these leaders that we have, these 14 leaders, they have said, we want people's participation in making laws. And we, don't, we do not believe that laws should be made in secret. I don't, we don't believe your freedoms and your taxes should be impacted in secret meetings. So, so we're having a new era of transparency. And we've come here to celebrate, particularly to celebrate those individuals that have stood up and are standing up and saying yes, we need to change the culture here in this Capitol building. We need to change the culture. History for too long has shown that too much goes on behind closed doors. That's changing. We can thank these 14 uh, senators and representatives for helping us in that regard. Now, I am going to, I'm going to name one by one those senators and representatives that have, have chosen to step out on behalf of people. And uh, I'll have copies here available for this list for the meeting. Senator Glenn McConnell is no longer uh, a committeeman, but he, a uh, chairman, but he uh, was the first to, to make this commitment. Actually, he was the second. So I do want to mention Glenn McConnell and thank him for that. Senator Larry Martin, Senator Danny Burden, Senator David Thomas, Senator Michael Fair, Senator John Corson, 
Senator Ronnie Cromer, Senator Thomas Alexander, Senator Jake Knox, Senator Harvey Peeler. All of these senators have agreed that it's important to invite the people into the lawmaking process by recording all votes in committees and subcommittees. And then we have Representative Phil Owens, Representative Bill Sandiford, Representative Gary Smith, Representative Alan Clemens, Representative <coughs> Nelson Hardwick. So now, uh, I would like to introduce to you uh, the man that, that began this whole process by, by making the decision that he would pledge to ask that all votes be recorded in any committee he went into. So I'll introduce to you now Senator Phil Shoup. Thank you, Don. Uh, as Don said, uh, Don and I were, uh, I was at a legislative delegation meeting uh, several months ago before the session started. And Don, as the uh, good patriot he is, was there at the meeting to, to, to tell us concerns that he believes that are on the minds of the people and on his mind, uh, as he continually does. He does it on a regular basis. He cares about this state, he cares about this country. And he showed up and expressed his concerns. And after the meeting, he and I were talking. And this concept came up, and it came up on the uh, outside uh, county square one evening. And uh, we talked about that, and I told him uh, I would do what I could. Uh, but uh, while that may have been the, the genesis of this, this effort, uh, the, the, the credit of the labor and the toil absolutely goes to uh, Don. Don really did the work. He, he came down here. He visited, he made appointments with committeemen, chairmen, he got the word out, he stood in this lobby countless hours waiting to speak to uh, uh, members that are their chairmen and put, to, to push this forward. He really does deserve the credit because he did the labor. It sounds like it shouldn't take labor, it shouldn't, it didn't be a lot of work, but it is when you're trying to track down a hundred or actually maybe about 20 people that are committee chairmen and talking to other supporters to get them uh, to do uh, to, to be on board and let us know what's on their mind, but uh, I just I, I come here today not to, uh, to, to to receive any credit as far as being the initial discovery. The initial idea and the effort comes from Don Rogers, and I just uh, here to applaud him for his time, his countless hours and effort in writing letters and meeting with people, being uh, uh, his efforts being postponed. He'd make a meeting and maybe something came up. He'd have to come back. But he never gave up. He was tenacious and uh, honestly, I, I, I say that he, he truly represents uh, uh, someone who, who's a patriot and loves this country and uh, I'm thankful to know him. Well, well, I can just say thank you, Senator, for those words, uh, some of which were true. <laughs> But we're, we're, we're very honored to have uh, Senator, uh, Senator John Corson here with us today. And uh, he has for a long time, he, uh, Senator Pro Tem, now he has for a long time been concerned about transparency and the recording of votes and, and making uh, lawmakers available. It goes way back into the 80s uh, when his desk mate was uh, Joe Wilson. And, and Joe Wilson and Senator Corson worked together on these issues. At that time, uh, that time they were not uh, exactly popular. It wasn't. Uh, it was the culture was uh, not to get uh, too much involved with people. But they went ahead and they pursued it regardless, and they put forth bills. Uh, but they never were very successful with it. You see, when you're the first to step out to, to uh, make a significant foundational change, you're going to find you're going to meet resistance. You're going to meet failure and you're not going to do well. It takes a long time to make cultural changes in, in an organization like we have here. And, and Senator John Corson is a great example of, of how that process must go, regardless of what the cost are. Senator Corson, you'll have a few words for us. Thank you. Thank you. Council, Macho, welcome to the state. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, first, uh, Don, uh, Several members in committee meetings this morning. That's probably going to have more committee to I say uh, the last two weeks of the general assembly occurring, return next week, and then come back and veto. 
I also want to echo what Sumter Schutman said about you. Uh, this is a grassroots effort. Y'all with the Cavaliers coming out of Greenville. Uh, you emailed me about it, and I, I thought about it for like five minutes. It absolutely it makes all the sense in the world. And let me ask David Thomas. David, if you join me here. David and I were elected to the Senate the same year, 1984. And so we came in 1985, we had a freshman class of 16 senators, and we pulled fire and vigor and just ready to go. And we noticed that there were very few roll call votes in the Senate. So we introduced legislation along with Joe Wilson, um, first day of the session, we were organizing to mandate that we have roll call voting on the second reading of all bills in the Senate. I made it from the podium before I could get back to my desk. President for temper at that time moved the table it and we didn't get a roll call vote on the motion. So it, it was that bad back then. We've made a, an awful lot of progress since then. But this makes all the sense in the world. I chair the Senate Education Committee. All the votes in the committee will be recorded. Any citizens of South Carolina will have an opportunity to go and look at those votes. Um, I think it's, it's transparency. And again, this is something that was grassroots. It did not have something shooting was involved. But it really can emanate it from grassroots and volunteer thing and shows what people can accomplish in South Carolina on a grassroots basis. I want to thank you and your efforts. And I also want to thank my friend David Thomas for standing with me in 1985. Thank you, Senator Corson. I also want to thank, uh, you know, to get something started that is going against the, the trend, as I say, is difficult. The very first uh, effort was, uh, was begun by the uh, South Carolina Policy Council. And the South Carolina Policy Council, uh, they quietly uh, use the tools of, of rational thought and persuasion based upon the research of facts that they gather and they help to uh, keep us informed on, uh, on the issues that go on here in this building. We appreciate the, the uh, Policy Council for what they've done on this issue of transparency. They were one of the very first that saw the need for the record vote. So thank you for them. And we have others here that we want to thank. But right now, uh, uh, Senator David Thomas, uh, I would ask you if you would. I will just say a few words, and, and I appreciate Don uh, you letting me come. Thank you very much to all the uh, leadership who, um, as committee chairman, see how simple it is to do this. All you have to do, you don't need a rule, but I think it would be good to have a, another rule in place when we go back in session uh, to revise Senate rules, revise House rules that would require committee roll call votes. It's very simple to do. Uh, you just have individuals raise their hand and staff simply marks who voted how. It literally takes a few seconds to do this. So to get full transparency in the committee process uh, literally uh, involves seconds. So to the person that might say uh, to uh, a media or somebody that this is too time consuming, we found in the Bank and Insurance Committee, it just takes a matter of seconds for each of the roll call votes uh, that, that, move the, uh, that move the legislation out. Thank you, Don. Thank you so much, Senator Thomas, for that. And we also are very proud to have uh, Senator Mike Fair, who's up our way, who, uh, who has stepped forward and, uh, and helped us in this way. Senator Fair, we to see you. Senator Thomas asked that I speak for about 30 minutes, so <laughs> <laughs> if you would just uh, all get comfortable. I, uh, Don, uh, my thanks as well. When, when uh, you called me, uh, as I recall our, our conversation, uh, I said uh, yes, and it was about that quick. And, and um, honestly, the whole matter is is that simple when you think about um, what what common sense uh, would say to us about uh, voting and voting publicly in a public building, uh, voting about public dollars, voting about public laws. So, so if there's so much common sense, it's kind of scary, isn't it? But uh, I, I also would add, and I think this is occurring across um, the other committees as well, is our subcommittees also are, are keeping um, a, a roll call votes in, in the, the committee that we chair, and I, I suspect that's happening in the other committees as well. And uh, I'm glad to be part of, uh, of this effort to congratulate the grassroots for um, taking hold of your government 
and uh, holding us accountable to that which we should be held. And uh, the, um, there are lots of people, I'm not going to go through a, lit a litany of names, but uh, just congratulations and thanks for including me in this uh, press conference today. Thank you, Sam. We also have with us uh, Representative Alan Clemens, who, uh, who would, who would say a few words on behalf of transparency. Thank you very much. I, I'll, I'll finish up your 30 minutes. There. Uh, I, I really appreciate the opportunity to be here today. And to, uh, uh, I'd like to thank very much those who have been involved in this issue of, of asking all the committee chairs to require a roll call vote. I think back to 1999 when I first, when I first began the process of running for political office. I, uh, I was running for the state senate. I don't know if you remember that. Uh, I was running for the state senate uh, as a Republican against then Democrat Lou Franklin. And in 1999, I began researching Senator Rankin's record, and uh, I was dumbfounded. There was no way to track the majority of the votes that uh, that had been taken. So. I made a campaign issue out of the fact that there were no recorded votes, or very few recorded votes, on the record votes uh, in, in that particular uh, that election. And it resonated with the people, not to the extent that I won, because that, that was of the 12 elections, including primaries and general elections I've been involved in since, uh, that was the one election I lost. But I believe that the people did uh, take notes. They stood up and they, they saw that something's wrong with the system where the people don't have the opportunity to delve down into the matter to see how their representative and their senator voted on an issue. And I'm proud to be a part of the initiative now of transparency, of openness, so that the people back home can open the Senate Journal and open the House Journal. And they can see from the Rules Committee or from the Ways and Means Committee or whatever committee it may be, how their representative voted and how they voted on the floor on any given bill or resolution. I'm proud to be a part of this effort. I'm proud that my constituents have the opportunity to see how their representative votes on every issue that comes before this body. Thank you very much. Thank you, Representative Clemens. And now, Finally, I want to make sure that we recognize uh, Steve Eisen. Steve Eisen has been uh, a close ally in all of the work we've done on transparency. Steve Eisen is uh, the chairman of Casey City Council. He's also uh, uh, chairman of the Republican, of the Lexington County Republican Party. And Steve Eisen, would you step forward? Thank you, thank, thank you Don. Uh, I want to uh, echo. Senator Morrison. Senator Morrison is one of our Republican Republicans in Lexington County. I am representing the Lexington County Republican Party. This is an essential liberties issue. It's a foundational issue for our platform for the Republican Party here in the state. So, uh, Jeff, Thomas Jefferson said information is the currency of democracy. It doesn't matter how smart you are, you have to make good decisions. These people behind me have to have the to have this uh, move forward, this plan to move forward to get information from me. Hurting this country, we don't have time for waste. We need efficient government. We need good information coming to the people, right. coming to elected representatives. So I, I applaud all these heroes here in the state house who stepped up to the plate to make this pledge. So um, you know, oftentimes politics is just thought of as an art looking for trouble. Uh, you know, diagnosing the problem incorrectly and applying the wrong remedy. This is not the wrong remedy. This is the right remedy for the right time, the right place. So you know, I, I give a round of applause to all of them. So to Will, let's give a round of applause. Thank you, Steve. Now, finally, uh, I want to thank my colleagues in the Green Tea Party who have been so helpful in, uh, in this effort. And the Greenville Tea Party, uh, in case you're not familiar with them, uh, you might want to check them out at GreenvilleTeaParty.com. There you will find uh, a scorecard that, uh, that uh, tells how our representatives
representatives are voting and representing you, before you go into the voting booth, check out that scorecard. You can also go to South Carolina Club for Growth. We have a digital scorecard as well. Recommend it to you. When you go into the voting booth this time, go in there aware of, of, uh, of your representative record. Thank you so much for coming. Appreciate it.